Mercedes have found another special talent to add to their driver lineup. He's been labeled the next Lando Norris, the next Max Verstappen, and even the future replacement for Lewis Hamilton. Kimi Antonelli is looking even closer to that first race in Formula One, even though he's only 17 years old, because in 2024, the Italian is jumping past Formula Three straight into Formula Two with Prema, who have recently guided the likes of Charles Leclerc and Oscar Piastri to Formula Two championships. So there's no pressure. Let's delve into the huge jump that Kimi is making next season, why he's made it, and if we'll see him in Formula One anytime soon. The last driver to make this larger jump through the single-seater categories was Max Verstappen. Red Bull promoted a 16-year-old Max Verstappen into a Formula 1 seat for a test, and by the time he was 17, he was in a full-time seat with Toro Rosso. Max Verstappen at that point had only been in junior single-seaters for less than a year, which actually led to a change in the Formula 1 super license, where drivers now need at least two years' experience in single-seater cars. But he is now a three-time world champion, so I think you can say it worked out. But in my opinion, Formula 1 needs new top class talent. Oscar Piastri has been the only full-time rookie that's looked good in years. 2019 saw the last world-class rookie influx in my opinion, with George Russell, Alex Albon and Lando Norris all coming through at the same time. And since then, we've had Nicholas Latifi join in 2020, who is effectively a moving cone for a lot of the drivers on track. Schumacher, Mazepin and Sonoda were added in 2021, and there's a reason only one of those remains. Zhou Guang Yu came through in 2022, and again, just hasn't been amazing. And even this year, outside of Oscar Piastri, Nick DeVries has gone after 10 races, and Logan Sargent hasn't set the timing sheets on fire. And the main reason behind the fact that most of the rookies coming through recently have been pretty poor is because a lot of the time, the talent that is there in the lower formulas doesn't come through due to the finances or politics of Formula One. If you look at Nicholas Latifi, Nikita Mazepin, Joe Guan Yu, and to an extent Mick Schumacher, they were only there due to the sponsorships that they could offer their respective teams. They had the finances backing them up. So if you don't have that, you need a huge team backing your corner. Luckily, Kimi Antonelli has Mercedes, and if Mercedes are backing you, surely you have to be good. So at this point in the video, you're probably asking yourself, who is Kimi Antonelli? Well, the 17-year-old Italian driver has been catching headlines for a few years now after winning titles across karting and junior single-seater categories. His dad, Marco Antonelli, was a GT driver, so he definitely has racing in his genetics because he started karting at the age of seven years old. But his talents only really started to be talked about when he was made part of the Mercedes Junior program back in 2019. Before he then won the CIK FIA Karting European Championship, championship twice in a row in 2020 and 2021. Since then, however, he has been competing in single-seaters. 2021 saw his debut in the Italian Formula 4 series with Prema, and even though he'd already missed a good chunk of the season, once he got up to speed, he looked pretty quick. His breakout weekend was probably the final event at the Monza circuit, a second-place finish in race one after a hard battle with championship leader Oli Behrman, and two third-place finishes to finish up the weekend was very impressive and meant that he ended up 10th in the standings, being just six points behind a full-time Prema driver. Which is why in 2022 he decided to stay with Prema and have a full season in Italian Formula 4. He didn't start off the season how he ended the last one unfortunately. He had a pretty shocking weekend in Imola with a DNF, a 24th place and a 10th place finish. But after that, from the second weekend onwards, he won 13 out of the next 19 races. Which won him the championship, as you can imagine, fairly comfortably. Not satisfied with that though, he also won the ADAC Formula 4 championship in 2022 as well, which is when he made quite a big decision. At that time, a different big leap than the one he's currently pursuing was offered to him. Antonelli was given the option to be fast-tracked straight into Formula 3, which he decided to turn down. He and his team made the point that Formula 3 naturally is quite mileage limited due to its place on the Formula 1 support calendar. But Kimi wanted to race as much as possible and get in the car as quickly as he possibly could. And they also pointed out that most Formula 3 champions usually come from Freca, so he opted to go to the Formula regionals instead of leaping straight into Formula 3. However, that Freca season wasn't the easy win for the Italian, which many expected it to be. In fact, he had to really fight for the Freca championship this year. Antonelli took until race 8 of the campaign to get his first win on the board at Spa, and then he found his rhythm a little bit. He won four of the next five weekends, which left Stenshorn and Transmits, the latter now a Red Bull junior, in his wake. His performance at Zandvoort this year was particularly very, very special. If there's 
there's one race to look up, that would be the one in my opinion. And he then finished the season with 300 points, 39 points ahead of second place, proving he was definitely ready for that Formula 3 seat. But in 2024, he's once again rejecting Formula 3 and instead hopping over said Formula 3 opportunity straight into Formula 2 from the Formula Regional European Championship. And as I said before, the only drivers that have jumped a step like this in recent memory are Max Verstappen and Lance Stroll. So I guess you could say it would go one of two ways, but I would actually say that in many ways, his career is more like the current McLaren main man, Lando Norris. He went through that same kind of karting dominance, Formula 4 four champion into Formula Renault journey, but Lando Norris's next step was European Formula 3, which he would then win, and Formula 2 was still another year away, which I feel like Kimi Antonelli would have probably done as well had this Formula 2 shot not become available. And for me, I think there are two reasons that he's getting this accelerated jump up the categories. Firstly, his mentality. Antonelli took pole for one of the races at the finale of the Freca season, but lost it to a yellow flag infringement, which led to Gwen Legru, Mercedes driver development advisor, saying, and it's these mistakes that we do in the junior series, we cannot repeat at a higher level which seems quite harsh considering he'd already won the title, but the team was still going for the Constructors' Championship, which led Gwen to continue and say, our role is not to be members of a fan club, but to build a professional project and tell him the truth. And I don't know about you, but I think if someone was that blunt with me at 17, I'd have probably taken it to heart, and I'm not sure how I would have handled it. But Kimi is very receptive to this kind of approach. Obviously, it helps that he and the team have known each other for nearly five years now since he's been in the Mercedes Academy, and he likes being told how he can improve, and he actually strives to continually get better and better after every single outing, and he's even been known to ask for constructive criticism even when he has won Grand Prix. So there's a confidence in Antonelli from Mercedes that in Formula 2 next year, he won't just lose his head if he isn't constantly winning. The second reason I think he's getting this jump, and probably the slightly bigger reason, is that Formula 2 are revamping their cars next season. They're being moved in a direction more akin to the new style Formula 1 cars that we've seen since 2022. So if Kimi Antonelli is ready, why let everyone else have an extra season in the brand new cars? Then you're just giving them a head start where you could bring Kimi in now on more of a level playing field whilst everybody is still trying to work out the new Formula 2 changes. So mechanically, Mercedes might be thinking to bring him up a season early so he doesn't get adapted to the Formula 3 cars that will now be very different to these new style Formula 2 cars. But there's also a reason why I'm personally excited to see him. He also has the benefit of being an Italian driver. There just haven't been many Italians for the country to really get behind. The last Italian world champion was Alberto Ascari in 1953. And considering it's the home of Ferrari, has two Grand Prix on the current Formula 1 calendar, has a huge fan base, you just have to look at Monza every season. There are thousands of fans that turn out for that every single year. And we haven't seen a lightning quick Italian in a really long time. Apologies, Antonio Giovinazzi. I know you won Le Mans, but you weren't very good in Formula One. And if he can live up to the expectations, I think it would be amazing for Italy. Although I don't know how they would feel about an Italian winning for Mercedes. With all that being said though, this kid is something special. You have to have a lot of faith in a driver to be comfortable with him skipping a category like he is. Plus, he's already considerably more famous than a lot of champions at his level of the ladder tend to get. There will be a lot of eyeballs on him, and I'm not expecting him to win Formula 2 or anything crazy like that next year, but he's definitely one to keep an eye on during the next season. Momentarily, let's step into dreamland. Let's say Kimi performs in Formula 2 next year, I think that's fair enough. And then in 2025, he has a real run at the Formula 2 Championship, maybe even wins it. Hamilton's contract is up then. Does he go straight into the Mercedes team, this wonder kid to replace the most decorated driver ever? Or maybe a seat at Williams like we saw with George Russell, possibly replacing Alex Alvon if he moves on, or Logan Sargent if he's somehow still in a Williams seat? If he really does prove his talent in Formula 2, surely someone would be willing to give him a seat for the 2026 season somewhere. But I'd love to know what you think. Do you think we'll see Kimi Antonelli on the Formula 1 grid anytime soon? 2025? 2026? 2026? seven? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. And if you've enjoyed this video, I also made this video here on some other rookies making their way towards Formula One, which I think you'll really enjoy too. So click that link and I'll see you over there.